Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. This is going to be my 65th Savor at Home tasting. Before I dive into the tasting, I just want to say thank you to all my YouTube subscribers. Uh, YouTube sent me an email this morning and said, hey, you have 100 YouTube subscribers. I feel like that's a big number. So I'm going to be paying more attention to my YouTube channel and hopefully uh, video editing will be a little bit better. Uh, maybe some better content. But anyways, for, oh, goodbye. For the tasting today, what I'm going to be trying is something that is still in the same region as the last tasting. We're gonna stay in Campbelltown. So what I've got for you today, or what I've got for me today, is Kilkirin Heavily Peated. This is a single malt scotch whiskey. This is batch three, as you can see on the back, which was just released in 2020. It is now 2021. And every year they have been releasing a new batch. So Kilkirin is produced by the Glen Gyle Distillery, which is right next to Springbank in the Campbelltown region of Scotland. For both Kilkirin and Springbank, what they're doing is they're malting their own barley together, their sister distilleries. Um, and for normal expressions of Kilkirin, the malt is only kilned for six hours with peat. And so this gives you very low levels of phenols, um, which makes for just hints of smoke. For this bottle in particular, it is heavily peated, much more peated than their normal expressions. And I don't think that I have done the Kilkirin 12 tasting. They're like flagship bottle. So I guess I'll have to do that one next. Um, now they don't disclose how long that they kiln their malt for the heavily peated, but my guess is that it's probably the same as what Springbank uses for their long grow bottles. So long grow is also produced by Springbank, which I tried last week, and they kiln their barley for 48 hours with peat, which is a lot more than the six that is normally used for Kilkirin. Um, so my guess is that they're probably using that malt, but you know, I don't know. So cannot confirm. Kilkirin also uses double distillation for their whiskeys. And for the maturation, they have three different types of barrels. Um, they have sherry butts, sherry hogshead, and bourbon barrels that they use for their maturation. What they're using for the Kilkirin heavily peated is 80% ex bourbon barrels and 20% ex sherry casks. I don't know if these are butts or hogshead or a combination of the both, but um, it is mostly X bourbon barrels. This is a little bit different from batch two, which I have not tried, uh, that uses, I believe the ratio is 55 to 45%, so a lot more sherry that goes into batch two. If anyone has a sample, send it my way. Kilkirin also does not add in any caramel coloring. So all the color that you see is from the barrel. Um, all right, so this bottle rings in at 59.7% ABV, so a nice high proof whiskey, and I can wait no longer. Let's dive right in. So you can check out that color. Now there's no age statement on this. It has a pretty light straw-like color. Um, that's all right. Uh, it is a majority ex bourbon barrels, so you can't expect too, too much color. Um, but in order to be called scotch, it has to be aged for at least three years. And I believe Kilkirin um, keeps everything uh, much, much older than that. So right off the bat, it's just tons of citrus. It's like lemon peel mixed with a sweet, sweet orange. It's like a mesquite barbecue in there. So there's also tons of smoke on the nose. It's got earthiness, like an earthy peat smoke to it. A little bit like motor oil in the best way possible. It's just sweet smoke. Um, very sweet, very smoky. You've got some fruits in there, some grassiness. 
It's a little waxy as well. Vanilla. It's a little floral, but almost like a jasmine. Yeah, the nose is super fun. The mouthfeel is so creamy. As soon as you get it in your mouth, it's just completely mouth coating, very warming, a little bit of tingles, but really, really for 59.7%, not bad at all um, with the alcohol heat. But yeah, the mouthfeel is so creamy and oily. It's wonderful. Um, immediately you get this just warm oakiness that comes forward. Toasted oak, seasoned oak. Then there's lightly roasted coffee beans. You get that smoke, but it comes across more as like roasty rather than like your typical peat reek. There's some roasted nuts in here, like peanuts. There's some really great baking spice, like nutmeg. Some bitter dark chocolate. It's a little briny. And there's just hints of that citrus in the background. It reminds me of eating like peanut brittle in an auto body shop something like that this is just really really lovely